Welcome to the Plant-Based Podcast. Did you know that plants are truly amazing? Not only can you grow them and eat them, you can also wear them, drink them, nourish your skin with them, and so much more. Let Ellen and Michael inspire you to love plants as much as they do, as they chat with the movers and shakers in this wonderful plant-based world. So, let's dig in. This episode is sponsored by our friends, Three Spirit Drinks. If you're trying to cut back on alcohol, Three Spirit Drinks have got you. The trio of non-alcoholic spirits are made entirely of active plant ingredients. By focusing on what's in a non-alcoholic drink rather than what's taken out of it. Three Spirits plants are giving you all of the pleasure and none of the hangover. Feel invigorated by English sugar beets, watermelon concentrate, pomegranate molasses, and the many botanical extracts. It's a true party starter. Find out more at threespiritdrinks.com. Three Spirits is not recommended for anyone pregnant, breastfeeding, children, and anyone on medication should consult their doctor before consuming. The Livener includes natural caffeine from the Gyuza plant, and when drinking Nightcap, we recommend not operating heavy machinery directly after drinking. Welcome to the Plant-Based Podcast News. Your horticultural news roundup for the week. A swathe of ancient woodland and open ground will be renamed and planted with more trees in honour of Captain Sir Tom Moore, the Woodland Trust has said. The 17 acres of land at Home House Wood near the fundraiser's childhood home in West Yorkshire will be renamed as Captain Tom's Memorial Wood. Google has revealed its most searched terms in the UK in 2021, and the list has everything from BBC Strictly Come Dancing to Piers Morgan. Tech giant Google releases its most searched for trends and terms each year. This year, it's no surprise that in 2020, coronavirus topped the list, but gardening terms are also ranking highly year on year as we're turning a nation into green-fingered people. Avian influenza is continuing its spread across the UK with numerous new cases confirmed since the start of December. Avian influenza of the H5N1 strain was confirmed in commercial poultry near Barrow on Soar. Rules came into force on the 29th of November, meaning that it's now a legal requirement for all bird keepers across the UK to keep their birds indoors. The Garden Media Guild Awards have been announced with a Lifetime Achievement Award going to the great Graham Rice, who's well known for his coverage on brand new plants. Other winners include Best Publication for Bloom magazine and Tom Brown's Scooped Journalist of the Year. Did you know it takes 59 steps to import a petunia from the Netherlands, as reported by the Financial Times? Britain's gardeners may experience higher prices and less plants because of a post-Brexit bureaucracy imposed by the UK on imports from the EU. During 2021, plant costs increased by 8 to 13% due to a range of reasons, one being Brexit. But the Horticultural Trades Association said prices will rise again after the UK government introduced charges for biosecurity checks. Ellen it's so hard because life just it just moves on I can't remember anything that happened last Thursday you know? <laughs> I can't remember like, anything from yesterday it's just weird isn't it yeah I'm not like I don't know not like those people that dwell on stuff do you know I was thinking today I was driving along and um I can't remember I can't remember what it was but I certainly can't remember the context I oh, know I remember like um 
last Boxing Day or something. Or was it the one before? Maybe the one before when I was staying at my friend's. And I think I had a sort of miniature argument with my mum on the phone. And I remember I was staying at my friend's and my friend like overheard heard it a bit. And I remember saying, oh, my mum's really annoying. And they're like, oh, I heard. And then as I was driving along, I was trying to remember what the argument was about. <laughs> I can't remember at all. <laughs> so I'm pretty good, like... Like, I can't fall out with people for long because I'll just forget it after a while. And then it's like, there's no point not being friends because it's like, you don't even know why you fell out. <laughs> just, I don't know. Oh, it's yeah. good. Sometimes it's good not to have a good memory. Yeah. Sometimes it's good not to have a memory. Yeah, sure. Like, <laughs> I, what, what were we just talking about? <laughs> oh, dear. Um, so, yeah, do you want to switch on? It's already switched on. Oh, was it? Oh, but we're recording, aren't we? <laughs> I don't know if that's that interesting, but yeah. Okay, we're switched on. Um, so I can't remember why. If I'm I'm going to fall out with you next Tuesday, Ellen, and I can't remember why. <laughs> <laughs> that's just silly. I'm not oh, going to answer goodness. any of your calls next Tuesday because I don't want to fall out with you. Oh, my God, that's so cute. But you might fall out with me because I'm not answering any of your calls. Oh, I see. But you won't call me. You know we hate it when people call people. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, call me. That's, like, you know, the one way to slow down any business activity is to say, call me. If you've got a date and a time for the phone call, that's good. But just a random kind of call me or can you call me is just like prolonging it. Like either set a time for the call or say what you want. <laughs> yeah we oft- we do have this conversation a bit don't we like I, I had an email a few days ago from someone saying oh you know da 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 do you have time for a chat this week yeah and I'm like well, well but what, what, what is it about no a no because I'm booked up all week but b like what surely you want to give someone some information before you arrange to do that I don't know it's funny isn't it I know Michael's currently taking a picture of the screen well, I want to get my bust in it, and you. You want to not my bust? <laughs> I'm well wrapped well, up. Already had to it's sit chilly here off. today. It's quite cold here today. It rained overnight, and I'm surprised. Oh, I see that um that um autumn's gone. I see it's all on the floor. Yeah, the leaves have fallen now. I mean, oh, actually, God. it depends on where you go. Some places in the city, there's still plenty of leaves because there hasn't been like the extreme weather I guess but um, it's been raining and a bit windy so they're pretty much all fallen now and it's sure. chilly it's chilly Helen, I got a question for you right I think it's quite an interesting question when you're um, if you want some like comfort food and actually this is a two pronged question like if you want some comfort food food that's going to make you feel good or maybe like make you feel like cocooned because maybe something you would eat as a child but I'm wondering if you might not be able to answer that because you might have changed what you eat since then. I just say all this and it doesn't make sense because I really fancy a prawn cocktail tonight. And it just <laughs> reminds me of like that being the Christmas starter. And I was always in charge of making it and even shelling the prawns myself. And yeah, so I just wonder like what would be a real comfort food that A, gives you memories and B, just makes you feel good? My comfort food <laughs> is... Probably three things I would say. One is chocolate. That's never gone away. I that's can not a really, meal. I can sit and eat a whole bar of chocolate, which but is that's like not a meal. meal. Although, did you know it's Deborah Meadon? Food. Did you... I didn't know you meant a meal. You just said comfort food. Oh well, I'm thinking meal. But Deborah <laughs> Meadon, she does make chocolate sandwiches. I heard she put the whole slab in between bread. Ooh, no, that's disgusting. Yeah. Um, Ice cream, big time. But I think my comfort food would be pizza. So the other night, um, I I don't know, we got to the end of the day and we both said, you know, what we're going to have. We'd had a bit of a rubbishy day. And so we went to a pizza place here called Fuel and we got the largest pizza that you could possibly get. And it's vegan. Uh, it has vegan cheese on it. And it fed us for like two days. Uh, maybe cool. yeah, maybe even a third. It was it was literally mammoth. It was just mm-hmm. huge. That is comfort food to me. But would you have had pizza when you were a kid? Yes, sure. But they wouldn't be so beautifully like... Yeah, um, they would be... Like, you, you would just get like the margarita pizzas, like the tomato and the cheese, wouldn't you? Would well, you remember, remember the that little, little... The small, they were almost just about six yeah. inches across. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we used to have those. Because I don't remember having big ones like that when we were kids. No, there was, I don't like these that they were stacked as four in a bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And you could get them deep fried as well. Yeah. Have you ever yeah. had that? No, I never had deep fried. Oh my god, deep fried pizza is lovely. Oh my gosh. 
Oh my god, but your arteries. <laughs> oh, yeah, but you know, just once is all right. Just once a week is all right. <laughs> just once every day is fine. Or, so I think prawn cocktail or even stuff like beans on toast or even like such a trashy, just like fish fingers, beans and chips or something. It's like you yeah. almost don't want to admit that you like it, but there's something about it because it obviously reminds you of your childhood, but it also makes you feel nice. There's so. nothing wrong with beans on toast. Mm, I true, like a bit of beans on toast. Especially when they're pimped up. What do you pimp them up with? Well, like black pepper, cheese. Um, I went through a phase of pimping up soups, Ellen. I did you? Yeah, you know, because you just get a soup like from the supermarket in one of these, you know, in the fridge. And then like, if you got, say, like a tomato one, for example, you could get some fresh basil, you can mix seeds in it, you can, uh, and it really can, pimps it up, really. I think that and T-shirt it, you've got on that says Plant Daddy should say Pimp Daddy. <laughs> You're Pimp Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ella Mary, honestly. <laughs> Tell me about some of the plants in the background there where you're sitting. <laughs> you're so square, Ellen. No, seriously, I want to see what they are. Ellen and I said we, we're going to talk more about plants on the podcast today. So she's like, oh, there's a shelf of plants. Talk to me about them. Yeah, that's <laughs> no, what this is all about. This is a prawn plant. Have you ever seen that before? Actually, it does look like a prawn plant. But it really it's does. To- I mean, to be honest, it doesn't look anything like Christmas. It looks more like a prawn. Well, I think that they're lovely. Like those Christmas cactus, and when you look really closely at the petals, they're yeah. shimmery. They're like they're, they're so beautiful. I don't know if it suits this blue pot or not. Blue and yeah, hot the pink, pink and blue are... is nice. I think the pink and blue is yeah. Nice. It's quite intense, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, very nice. Island, that's the only plant on the shelf. The rest of them are faux. <laughs> do you have any? Yeah. Uh, do you have any plant fails? this week in your house anything oh, I'm pretty excellent really yeah. really yeah. Though? I don't believe you I can't think of anything really um hmm we did Christmas plants on Steph's pat lunch yesterday did anything fail hey you know when you put amaryllis in a in a jar like on gravel and maybe you put lights around it yeah is that chabby or not <laughs> <laughs> Is that chavy? Do I think plants and lights together are chavy? <laughs> Absolutely not. Bring on the chaviness. Yeah, okay, cool. Why is that? <laughs> Why would you think that is chavy? I don't know. Um, someone commented on Instagram, and I think they're probably a purist, like maybe a botanist, and then they, they suddenly see like lights surrounding a hippie ashram and they like panic. So, yeah. <laughs> no, I I'm just think, happy like, to, you know, we're bringing horticulture to the masses. It's just good fun, isn't it? And it's Christmas. Like, there's lights and beautiful plants, so why not? That wasn't my fail per se. Um, the, well, mo- the, the most a plant has annoyed me this week is my aster in the front garden that I need to cut down because I keep shutting it in my car door every time. <laughs> time to definitely cut it down then. Tell me yours. <laughs> I haven't had any plant fails this week, but I do have one that I found online. And that is the Cloud Gardener. Have you seen the Cloud Gardener on Instagram? So he no. is gardening uh, on a balcony up high in Manchester. And the really funny thing England. was... England? Yeah, a couple uh-huh. of weeks ago, um, I found my string of hearts, which is a pain to keep alive. It certainly is here in my apartment anyway. Mm-hmm. It was covered in mealybugs. And I tried mm-hmm. everything to, you know get rid of the mealy bugs but it didn't work and so I chucked it in the bin and anyway the cloud gardener posted a reel yesterday of how to care for a string of hearts and it's wow. super serious you know it's kind of like look you know this is how you care for the beautiful string of hearts da, da, da. and then it just switches to him chucking it in the bin <laughs> yeah that's what I would do <laughs> no it's just oh. like yeah but all no, the people who I, say string of hearts is easy to look after it is not true Mm, but mine, I've got one upstairs, but I've just like forgotten about it. Like, mm, I've tried that, that approach too, but forgetting about it for just one day too long and it doesn't like that. And then if you oh. water it just one day too soon, it doesn't like that either. You know, <laughs> it's kind of just like, Ugh. so yeah, there you well, go. I got like this, I think, um, because this shelf here is under the radiator, I think it's actually like a lot warmer than I ever imagined. So right. I think I should probably replace all this with cactus because I yeah. think some of these are a bit tropical and they just 
it's not that they're unhappy, but they're just not happy. <laughs> yeah. Actually, when I was away last year from my house in the UK, all of the plants that were on the shelves above the radiator really struggled. And they mm. most of the ones I threw away when I got back were on that shelf. Yeah, I need to do something about that. And they just dry out so quick. Yeah. Just, yeah. Even this time of year, you'd think I'll oh, keep them dry in the winter, but it's like they're fucking, they're bone dry, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you really saw <laughs> there, Ellen. <laughs> naughty, naughty. Um, so, anyway, I have got a whole a worktop here right now covered in natural Christmas decorations so I've been Mm -hmm. uh, because we're not here for Christmas we're going to my sister's I'm not getting all the lights and buying loads of Christmas decorations don't even have anywhere to store them Mm -hmm. um so everything's going to be natural so I've been out foraging I've got like acorns and twigs and things (laughs) pine cones and I've just got some string and some bits and bobs anyway so I've been making some natural Christmas decorations I've got some videos that I'm going to put on my reels soon and like making little stars out of twigs I've had the best fun (laughs) <laughs> I'm like I, I kind of you know how we've done crafty things before and we've both come away and said that is way harder than it looks you know mm. when you look at people wow. doing it online it's like oh that's so easy and you come to do it and it's tricky it is I've done super basic stuff and it was really really nice and I even played a Christmas tune on the radio oh what the flip I know what's happened to me I don't know honestly I was just like trying to play the radio the other day and every channel's got like Christmas songs on and it's just but I do love how on Boxing Day they suddenly just drop off just like that like, <laughs> boom, <Yeah>. boom. <laughs> but do you know what Ellen I like Christmas I'm not a huge fan as you well know but I quite uh, in some way I quite like Christmas trees do you know what I mean yeah okay I don't know and I've been sent one which is Oh, I'm not sure what it is, but it's quite tight. It's, it's obviously just like a conifer that's kind of being repurposed as a Christmas tree. Right. But it's quite cool because I like the kind of alternate type of Christmas trees a bit. Yeah. So, yeah, I can't resist. It's got a few little lights on it. It's quite cool. And that's I've got this little mini one, actually, where they're only about that tall from Bloom and Wild. Right, which nice. Which is pretty nice. Yeah, you know the ones that come flat pack? They'll flat pack anything, those. Oh, man. <laughs> <man. laughs> But somehow it works. <laughs> everybody wants to be IKEA. Everybody. Oh, I am. Um, I've got a Norfolk corporate. Island. Farm. That goes through the letterbox, isn't it? I guess so. Yes. Oh, it's just convenience, isn't it? I've got a Norfolk Island pine to. Yeah, yeah, yeah me too. Although one of them died. Actually, that should have been my fail of the week, but I probably concealed it from you. But honestly, I don't know. It just started dying from the top. So. From the top. I put it outside, so it either survived or didn't. I haven't looked at it since. I was just like, get out. <laughs> <laughs> get oh, out honestly. of it. Mm. It's probably died. Like, do you have it? Probably died already, so. Do you have it indoors all year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can have it as a houseplant, can't you? Yeah, you can have it indoors or outdoors. Yeah. I just really kind of wondered. Mm. But they are. They're really cute little plants. But... I wonder what this other little Christmas tree I've got because it's more full as a Christmas tree. So. Oh, that's cute. Anyway, I don't know. Hey, Ellen, we, um, you know, Free Spirit, our sponsor. Yeah. We were going to do a bit of an anti Christmas party, weren't we? Yes. When should we do that? Well, shall we get our diaries out and work out when we're going to do, do it? Yeah. Um, what sort of night are people more. An anti-Christmas party, which I, mm. is brilliant to me, um, where we can just drink three spirit and chat plants. Well, do you know what? I've got a real problem, Ellen. Yeah. Because, um, you know, um, Rafael, my partner, is drunk called the free spirit. How dare he? I know. <laughs> so when we do this, I'm going to have to, like, get cherry aid and pretend it's free spirit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're basically going to cheat and you're telling him. On one hand, cheat. I'm not that bothered because it's like, it's nice when someone likes something and enjoys something and it says a lot for this drink. And I've had, um, I had another kind of non-alcoholic thing delivered. Sometimes they're just, they're just a whole lot of nothing, aren't they? I don't know. I think <laughs> once you have free spirit, spirit is definitely, you know, yeah. it's, I you're know there are sponsors, spoiled. but geez. Yeah. You're spoiled. You have three spirit and then all of the other non-alcoholic botanical drinks just don't have yeah. flavours. It's like, what are you doing? There was one... Oh, I messaged you the other day, didn't I? We won't say any names. But I said to you, have you tried blah, blah? And you were like, yeah. And I was like, what is it? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No names. Don't mention any names. I don't know. Just... 
I don't even know what they're doing, but yeah. Anyway, free spirit, big up free spirit. When are you free? Well, this is going to be very complicated. Well, just tell me. I'm basically next. Oh, it's just a very busy time. (laughs) So. um, Of course, because, yeah, it's like in the middle of your afternoon, isn't it? I forget that. Yeah. So this weekend is um, my 19th wedding anniversary. And we've basically got something on Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Oh, no, I was thinking, I'm talking about next week anyway. I know you are. I'm just going through the diary. And then Tuesday... Oh, you just wanted to tell me how busy you were next week. No, no, Oh, try and get me to send you an anniversary card. That's what you were doing. Funny time. I I missed that. I missed it there. I missed my cue. (laughs) I think really, for me, honestly, it's going to be Tuesday. Mm. See, Tuesday was my least one. Could you do Thursday? I don't know why I'm pulling this face. (laughs) You look very serious. Would Thursday work for you or not? I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. Uh Uh-huh. What about Monday? No? Oh, you can't do Monday? Monday the 13th. Yeah, I I can do Monday. I could do Monday. Yeah. All right, let's do that, babe. (laughs) Uh, What time? Uh, 7 p.m. UK. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. Right. So that is organized right here, right now, live on the podcast. So would you like to announce the event? <laughs> would I like to announce the event? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Can we have some music, Gareth, please? Yeah, add, add, make, do a little advert for this um, anti-Christmas event. So on Monday the 13th of December, Michael and I are going to be live on Instagram. We're going to do an anti-Christmas party, enjoying three spirit drinks, or at least I will be enjoying three spirit drinks. And there is even going to be a giveaway. So our listeners, if you're on the live, you could be in a chance uh, for winning a three spirit gift pack just in time for Christmas. So come Absolutely. and join us. We have all sorts of fun little challenges. You can win plug geek pins as well. We might get you to come on camera. It's going to be a bit of an anti-Christmas vibe though, isn't it, Ellen? So is, I yeah. think we need to all come in flip-flops. I might cover my kitchen floor in sand yeah. and just pull, pull my sun lounger in. <laughs> Put your Hawaiian shirt on, you know, pretend it's the middle of the summer. It's going to be anything but Christmas, but we will be enjoying three spirit drinks anyway. So <laughs> Definitely. So be here 7pm on Monday the 13th of December or be a squished tangerine. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Is that our gossip? What do you mean? Are we done? No. <laughs> oh, that was that's really long. Was it? I thought it was yeah. really short. <laughs> oh my god, we're really not on the right form today. <laughs> um, I was uh, I was thinking maybe let's talk about series six and some of the things like the talk about the winter thing that we said. Do you think or not? Maybe people got ideas of what we can do for those. Oh, for the winter sessions? Yeah. I think, like, it doesn't hurt. To, and we've got, um, we might, we could say, like, some of our contributors as well. What do you think? Oh, I tell you what. Um, I'll we tell should, you what. No, uh, maybe we should announce the new contributors nearer to the time. Yeah? Maybe, like, on the next one or two. Don't you think? Or know. maybe we should tease this time and say we've got new contributors. So listen to the next podcast and we'll announce who they are. Okay. And but talk about winter stuff. Yeah, the winter sessions. Yeah. Cool. Okay. <laughs> we should really have discussed this properly. <laughs> Why well, put it in my notes? <laughs> oh please. What well, is in my notes? All the I'll things that I do gossip about. You I tell know. me I'm square. <laughs> but I was really impressed with what you'd put in the notes this week, to be honest. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Michael's impressed with me because I actually put stuff in the notes. I think that's worth being in the gossip for sure. Anyway, should we talk about uh, what's happening between now and series six, Michael? Ding to the dong. Well, obviously this week is in between you with the news. Then next week is Plants on TV talking to Philip Corpse about um, how he puts together different TV shows and the flowers behind that. 
then after that, Ellen and I have got a Christmas special with lots of contribute well, not contributors, but lots of people wishing us happy Christmas. And you, the followers, you're going to get wished happy Christmas, but hopefully a few voices you might recognise because they're people from our favourite podcasts. So it's going to be really fun to see kind of who pops up in there, isn't it? Because obviously we've got, we're not only interested in plants, are we, Ellen Mary? You uh, know, no, we are not. I've got quite enough. a catalogue of interests. A whole, What's that world doesn't, a whole world doesn't evolve around <laughs> Just 90% of it does. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so, yeah. so that's going to be really fun. And um, if we get our act together, there'll be a little quiz there as well. Yeah. And then in the winter, what are we doing in the winter, Melon? So in between Series 5 and Series 6, we are going to be doing some winter sessions. So just like between Series 4 and 5, Michael and I both done a few podcasts solo. We were allowed to go out solo interviewing people. (laughs) So it was just all stuff to do with things that we were really interested in. So mine was well-being and Michael's was plants and plant breeding. So for the winter sessions, we wondered if you guys, our listeners, would like to... Tell us what you would like to hear from us, what you would like our, us to go out and and talk about, especially for you. So, yeah, winter sessions. Um, please, you know, DM us, email us, podcast yeah. at ellamerygardening.co.uk or um, come on over to socials and answer our posts over the next few days on Plant Based Podcast and let us know what you would love to hear us do. And Michael will go off solo and I'll go off solo, I think, just two episodes each. Two or three. Yeah, I really want to manifest Gemma Collins. <laughs> you can do I that. Can. She, was at, she, so, was at, she was at Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to work on that one. And we're also going to celebrate our favourite episodes as well. But Series 6 is quite cool to be that far, isn't it, darling, really? I know. How I feel really like- quite proud. <laughs> It's really weird, isn't it? Like when we started, we genuinely just done it because we wanted to talk about plants and thought it was a really good idea. Uh, we thought it would be good fun. And now we're on series six, which is crazy. And we've already got some in the bag for series six. We've got some great guests coming up for that series too. So yeah, it's really, uh, I mean, it's it's kind of like sometimes I have to check in on my, on it. Do you know what I mean? Like, wow, we've come, we've come really far. We started in 2018. <laughs> that's really cool yeah so what else is going on with your day apart from stroking your cat my cat is a dog that's like a teddy bear oh, and nice. the, re- the reason why I put her on my lap was because she was starting to play up and was going to start oh. barking while we were recording oh, how, how could you tell she was convulsing <laughs> She starts getting kind of like edgy and flinging toys around and coming uh, I mean, and yeah I do that you do that <laughs> So, yeah, I figured I'd better put her on my lap. But um, for the rest of the day, I've got a lot of work to do. I've got some more of my Christmas decoration videos to record. Oh, my and Lord. Then I'm off out tonight to a really cool vegan restaurant here in Charlotte called Oh My Soul. And uh, mm-hmm. it's a two for one burger night. So <laughs> go for a vegan burger. What oh, my you? soul. It sounds like Oh My Arsehole. <laughs> No, it sounds like Oh My Soul. <laughs> <laughs> I always been the best name for a restaurant was Jamaican Me Hungry. <laughs> <laughs> it's in Key West. Go there. <laughs> Jamaican Me Hungry. I've been to oh, Key dude. West. I loved it, Key West. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's really cool there. I went on my own for a week and just hung oh. out. It was so, so nice. I remember I had a triple vodka there and I couldn't feel my legs. <laughs> I know, seriously. <laughs> There's a oh great karaoke bar there as well. Yeah. <laughs> so well, what if I couldn't feel my legs, I couldn't feel my um, singing. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't hear it anyway. You. Um, I, don't, I, I can't remember I would have, um, I can't remember the last time I would have drunk more than like a glass of wine, really. Uh, yeah, I tend to only have one drink, so I might only yeah. have one cocktail or one glass of wine. Yeah. I don't drink much more than that. Seems tends to be enough, really. Unless I'm on a girls' night and they're few and far between at the moment, so. <laughs> girls' night out. <laughs> girls' night out. Now I just want to sit on the sofa and cuddle my dog all day. Um, so, yeah, you've had a busy day, haven't you? So I, are you chilling out tonight now? Yeah, I just uh, need to go to Waitrose. Um, but did a seminar for Israeli company Danziga and I was hosting. So I wore a shirt and a jacket. Uh, tomorrow morning I'll do another seminar for international company and doing like little demos and stuff. It's really funny though, because it's like, it's the same as doing live TV. It like takes 
so much energy running up to it and doing it and then afterwards you kind of feel a bit like brian dead do you know what i mean <laughs> that's sorry that's Poor my brian. own word for brain dead yeah <laughs> but yeah you just feel really weird and it's like it's it's amazing how much energy it takes out of you that stuff it really does because yeah. you just have to focus so much and you're planning it all in the run-up to it and then when you're doing it you're completely 100 percent engaged in it mm. like i said you know, and and this is a whole area of work that just wasn't there before it's just mad it's very cool amazing isn't it it really is so yeah some good things have come from the last few years and oh so (laughs) um yeah so quite busy with all that stuff and i still like obviously writing a book is great but then going through the edits is like a whole nother project (laughs) so yeah oh so i need to do that and check illustrations and this and that it's just oh my god have you done your christmas shopping no i'm not really um i don't know like there's not many people i necessarily buy for and my parents tend to tell me what they want or they buy it already and they're like give us some money (laughs) (laughs) so it's kind of takes a bit of that like flair out of it and also like with my partner we're just kind of like we tend to like go through the year and just buy what we want to have and kind of like i don't know and we did a cool thing last year though which i can give you as an idea even you know i don't own the idea because it's quite simple but you know (laughs) just like a little cool food hamper yeah yeah of like unusual because we like kind of unusual stuff and bits and bobs like that so that's quite cool so yeah that's what and it's and it's always nice kind of making up a box of something or a hamper because then yeah. you get the opportunity to buy like 20 little cute presents rather yeah. than just one you know yeah. no, I quite like doing that but anyway yeah well, that's yeah. nice very thoughtful of you oh, I'll, I'll expect mine delivered shortly then <laughs> do you remember after I've been in hospital you sent me some Pringles yeah which obviously were supposed to come when I was in hospital but then they they still got forwarded on to me afterwards. Do you remember? <laughs> Which was that is quite so cool. sweet. <laughs> Obviously, they were like in a hundred pieces by then, but it was like, oh my god! You were in hospital, and I said to you, "What would you really love to eat?" And you said Pringles. So I, I sent you like all the flavored Pringles I could find. <laughs> What? Who sent them? Your mum? You didn't. You didn't send them, obviously. Yeah, I know. I got them online somewhere or another. Uh-huh. You can buy Pringles online. Yeah, I think it was something like the the British food shop or something like oh that. Oh my god, I've heard it all now. <laughs> and it was during COVID as well. So do you know what? You couldn't get Pringles and you couldn't get a delivery because like everything was booked up and everything was gone. And so I found this. I'm sure it was called like the British. Oh, the really? British corner shop or something like that, and they well, they sent them to you anyway. <laughs> oh my god, that's cool! I need some marmite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ding dong! Very good. Oh, the cool. dog. Well, now off you go. Thank you. I know. I'm gonna <clears throat> go go and do my middle class shopping. Yeah, when you said waitress, I did giggle to myself. What's wrong with Lidl? I don't know. To be honest, like I don't know. I just got to have and and I think. The price is not so, it's not like what it used to be. When we were kids, like Waitrose would be like, oh my God, wow, that's really kind of posh. You would never go. But I think it's really, I think it's kind of mainstream now, isn't it? Like on a par with Sainsbury's in Supermarket Wars, is it not? Yeah. Or, yeah. I don't know. So it doesn't particularly feel bougie, but yeah. Bougie, bougie. Um, <laughs> but also, just... it's always like quiet as well. So. Yeah, true. That's because only some people can shop in Waitrose. <laughs> not everyone, guess, I'm, not everyone I'm, has that luxury. But I'm always going kind of like sort of six, seven. So I guess I'm always seeing it in that format. So, yeah. Hey, anyway, before we go, <laughs> no. before we go, I have a plant of the week. Because I want everyone yeah. to look this up because it's completely amazing. Um, it's a new Agapanthus hybrid and it's called emerald ice it's not introduced yet it's going oh. to be introduced in the near future um but it it has like a lime lime green flower head and i cannot tell you how amazing it looks and i want to be one of the first people to have it in my garden <laughs> agapanthus emerald ice come into a store near you soon <laughs> oh my god do you know what this means ella mary the fact that you've spotted a new plant out there yeah yeah, yeah. it means what? because you've just come with that new plants are now mainstream <laughs> i knew it would happen one of these days 
And now, do you know what's going to happen now? And I'm going to be a mixture of excited, but also annoyed. TikTok is now going to be full of new plant reels and ticks. Ticks. They're not called ticks, are they? (laughs) (laughs) I I am Brian dead. (laughs) I think it's time you went and had a snooze. Oh, dear. All right, I'm off to get a Brian. Nice. (laughs) Nice chatting, MP. All right, you too. Bye, Tim Daddy. (laughs) Hey, thank you for joining us on the podcast today. This episode was brought to you by Free Spirit Drinks. They are a botanical trio of non-alcoholic drinks that are made entirely of plants. Visit the link in the podcast description to get 10% off your next plant-based spirit. The music for the Plump Ace podcast is part of the song Grow by Mikey James. And our editor is Gareth Patch of Semi Echo. Mm-hmm.